everyone, I'm Jessica, one of the Okapi keepers here at the zoo, um, and you're going to get to meet Sakari and Kwame. These are two of our Okapi. Um, so we're just going to wait a few minutes while everyone has a chance to get on Facebook before we start everything. Um, but I've actually been a keeper here at the zoo for 10 years now, working with all of our hoofstock here at the zoo. Um, our hoofstock collection is pretty cool. It includes rhinos, giraffes, okapis, anteaters, and a few more. So it's a lot, a really fun collection to get to work with. Um, and then we also have Kendall here. She's uh, gonna help me today. She's kind of our person down at the ground to help us with the okapi. Um, she's also been working the zoo six years, seven years now. Um, she was an intern and then we, we kept her. We didn't let her go. <laughs> so she's still with us. Um, and the our okapi don't only live together. We also have a blue crane and dikers that live with the okapi. So you might see them um, a second or two if they come into view. Um, but this is um, both our female right here, Sakari. Females actually don't have those horns on their head. Um, and where your males actually do have the horns on their head, the ossicones is what they're actually called. So Kwame is your male. Um, Sakari here is 12 years old and then Kwame is 20. Uh, Okapis actually are not related to zebras. These guys are closely related to giraffes. You can see the similar, they have really long tongues. We'll see if Kwame sticks out his tongue, maybe not. But their tongues are up to 18 inches long. And then they have the slope back like a uh, giraffe has. Um, so they're more closely related to that. And they also have ossicones. Um, their striped butt actually is more for camouflage. So it looks like they could be crossed with a zebra. It's actually their form of camouflage. When they're in the dense forest, it helps them blend in um, with all the plants. Um, I, we have a question if they are endangered. Okapis actually are endangered. Um, there's not sure what the numbers are. Um, these guys are only found in the Congo um, in a forest and due to mining in the last several years and um, illegal poaching, they have become endangered. The okapis haven't actually weren't discovered until the early 1900s, so there's still a lot not known about okapi. Uh, we have a question from Kaylee. Do they make, Casey, do they make sounds? So they do make sounds. Um, it's not very common that you hear them. It's more the babies that will make like bleak and other sounds to their mom. Um, we rarely ever hear the adults make them, but occasionally they'll make sounds at each other um, when they're walking past each other. Um, they try to stay quiet because that's how, how they'll protect themselves in the wild. They don't want predators to know that they're around. Um, Alicia wants to know how big do they get? So female okapis are actually larger than your males. Females can be up to like 750 pounds. Um, well, your males are more like, they can be 500 to 650 pounds. Um, so Sakari here, I think she's like 700 and 25 pounds right now, where Kwame is only about 600 pounds. Um, these guys have super long tongues. Their tongues are up to 18 inches long, and they're a dark color to help protect them from the sun. Uh, so we have a question from Kendall. Can they swim? I don't believe they swim, um, so they never are swimmers. Uh, so Mary asked, why is their fur so shiny? So these guys, if you actually ever got a chance to pet them, their fur feels like velvet, um, and it's very shiny because they're covered in oils, and those oils help protect them from the rain, so um, it will just like beat off of them when it rains, and that helps keep them dry. When they're in the tropical forest in Africa where it rains all the time, they don't, they can stay dry. And if you actually pet them, your hands will get covered in like red oils. Abby asks, what toys do they play with? 
Um, so Kwame and Sakari, I'm trying to think what their favorite toys are. We give them, Kwame likes to lick things. So he gets a lot of toys that he can lick. We have a like a horse treat that's called a lick it. He loves to do that. He'll spend hours licking something. Um, Sakari here, she probably her favorite thing is deep brows. Um, so we'll give her fun things to hang and she can eat off the brows. Jessica asks, what kind of leaves are they eating? So this is mulberry. Um, we our horticulture department here at the zoo provides us with all different types of uh, trees that we can give the okapi. Um, today they gave us mulberry. It's one of their favorites. Um, okapis actually can eat like a hundred different types of um, vegetation and they'll actually eat toxic um, plants in the wild but they just constantly keep moving and will eat different uh, varieties. Um, so that's how they can handle the toxicity. Um, they ask, where are they from? So Africa, these guys are from Africa. They're mostly found, or they're only found in the Congo in a forest there. Um, so that is where they're found. Um, but they have lived in the U.S. their whole lives, these two Pacific Okapis. Uh, Jacob asked, what are their predators? So their only predators, I believe, are just leopards. Um, but they do have a, people can also be their predators. They're now getting poached in the wild by people as well. Caleb and Michael ask, are they related to zebras? They are not related to zebras. They're only related to giraffes as their closest relatives. You can see they have the slope back. Um, Kwame here has those ossicones on his head. Um, and those are the same things that you would see in a giraffe. Um, but in okapis, only the males have the ossicones and the females do not. Chrissy asks, do they play with each other? Um, a little bit here and there. Um, Kwame and Sakari together isn't always a usual thing. In the wild, these are strictly a solitary species. They would only get together for breeding. Um, but we're kind of lucky. Kwame is kind of a calm male, so we're able to get away with having Sakari and Kwame together. They actually like to be together. Hey, Paige asks, why are their tongues so long? So their tongues are so long because they can help them to reach the trees and their tongues are also like prehensile so you can see a little with Kwan, or Sakari here, her tongue's prehensile so she can like wrap it around the leaf and pull it off the branch. Um, but it's just so that they can reach taller trees and vegetation in the wild. Trisha asks, can they jump? They are not jumpers. They're not really built for that. Um, their main defense is to, they'll either hide, they have really good camouflage, so they can hide really well in the forest and they can kick if they need to, um, or they could take off running if they needed to as well. But they blend really well in their environment. Uh, Lisa asks, how fast can they run? I believe they can run like 30 miles per hour. Jennifer asks, how long do they live? Okapis can actually live closer to like 30. Um, our co-copies right now, Sakari is 12, and then Kwame is 20. He'll be 21 in December. Corey asks, do they mate for life? They do not mate for life. Um, they would constantly uh, find a new mate as they go through the forest. Um, yeah, they don't. other colors. Nope, this is the only color Okapis ever are. Um, when they're born, they look exactly like their parent. They're just a little mini stuffed animal version, is what I like to say. They look like little walking stuffed animals when they're born. Um, yeah, but, and then the mom will actually hide their baby in like a little nest and only come a couple times a day and nurse um, and then leave her baby hidden in the forest. Jessica asks, how tall can they grow? So they're about five feet tall. Um, from like the withers and a little bit taller when you add the neck.
Katie asks, can they see color? Yeah, they can see some color. Barbara asks, are they brother and sister? These are not brother and sister. These are actually a breeding pair. Um, so they are uh, recommended to breed. So hopefully Sakaria will eventually give us a female. They are actually pregnant for 14 and a half to 15 months. And then they only have one calf at a time. Um, and that calf would stay with the mom for the first probably year of its life. And they'd probably be winged around six months old. Stephanie asks, what do they use their horns for? So the males would use them a little bit with like competition if they came across another male. Um, but other than that, that's probably about it. Leonard asked, do they make nests for, like birds? Not really, it's more of a, they'll find a nice little spot in the forest on the ground that they'll uh, stash their baby in. Um, but they'll make sure it's like a very well hidden uh, location. Um, and one cool thing about baby okapis, they, they actually don't poop for the first like six weeks of their life. And that's to prevent any predators smelling them so that they won't find them. Um, and then we wanna give a shout out to Luke. Happy sixth birthday, Luke. Elizabeth asks, how long is their gestation period? Females are pregnant for about 14 and a half to 15 months. Okay, so we got, if you're just tuning in, this is Kwame and Sakari. Kwame is the one on the left. He's our male and you can tell he's a male because he actually has isocones on his head. Those are those horn-like um, protrusions off of his head. Um, and then this is Sakari. Sakari doesn't have osicones, so that's one cool thing about okapis um, is the females don't have osicones, so it's an easy way to tell them apart. Um, these are a breeding pair. Sakari here is 12 and Kwame is 20. Um, they are recommended to breed, so maybe in a couple years we'll have some baby okapis for y'all to come see. Um, and then we also, they share, they live in a multi-species exhibit. So we have other animals that live with the okapi. We have uh, the blue crane, also known as the Stanley crane. His name is Nat. He's over there taking a little nap today. Um, and those guys are actually from South Africa. And then they also share the exhibit with dikers, but they're not out today. <laughs> or they're hidden, very well hidden in the bamboo today. Julia asks, are they shy or social animals? Um, they are very, um, it depends on the okapi. Some are more social than others. Um, with together, together they're usually a very solitary species, so they don't find in big groups of okapis. Um, but Kwame is very social with people. I don't think he's ever met a stranger. He loves to look you across the face. It's his favorite thing to do. Where Sakari is very shy. You can't really uh, pet Sakari. Um, she's not a big fan. Um, so what we're doing today um, is also if you ever get, decide you want to meet an okapi, we do offer okapi tours on our Facebook page or on our website um, so you can get an opportunity to feed an okapi. your cell phones and other electronic devices. So 
So the area that you find okapis in is getting mined for um, parts of stuff that goes in electronics. So by you recycling your phone when you're done using it, you'll help save okapis and other species that okapis live with. Uh, so we got the question, what do they eat? So these guys are browsers, which means they would eat um, different types of branches and leaves throughout the day. So we provide them here at the zoo. Um, we give them several branches, and then we also provide them alfalfa, hay, and grain as well. But their favorite treat is probably eating leaves. Jackie asked, what do they use ossicones for? So the males would use the ossicones Ossicones, when they're, um, if they come across another male, they can kind of compete it out and see who could win the female. Kendall, can you show the stripes? Uh, I can try. You want me to go? Yeah. All right, we're going to go mobile then. Mm -hmm. So they've got stripes on their backsides. Helps them camouflage in the shade of the jungle that they live in. Uh, Kimberly asked, is the male larger than the female? So in okapis, actually the females are larger than your males. They could be easily 100 pounds heavier than your males. So Sakari is definitely bigger than Kwame. Have they been at the zoo? Kwame has been here, I want to say almost 20 years. And then Sakari, we've had about five years now, I believe. So they were born in captivity. Um, Kwame is originally from the San Diego Zoo. Um,